There have been quite a few new updates to mostly Instagram today, but also TikTok, LinkedIn has some updates. So I'm excited to dive into what is new. I honestly cannot believe that it's already September. We're nearing the end of the year and September 1st, the day that this episode drops is one month from my new book release. So quick plug, because I haven't really talked about it on this channel. If you love poetry, if you feel like you're running out of time, if you're feeling the pressure of time, my newest book comes out October 1st. It's called From Sand to Stars and it's available wherever you get books, really Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, Waterstones, Chapters, all the places internationally as well. So please feel free to check it out if you are interested in poetry. All right, let's go ahead and start with Instagram because there are some pretty exciting updates, I think. The first thing that I want to say is at the time of filming this, reach and engagement is down for so many of us. It's honestly down for me too. But the thing is, is that I've been using social media for a long time now. And if there's one thing that I've learned to be true about social media over the years, over the past eight years of growing my audience to more than half a million followers and selling tens of thousands of my books through social media it is that things ebb and flow. And that's why I do not panic anymore when reach is down, when my engagement drops, because I know that one, I'm going to stay consistent and try new things in this downtime to bring it back up. And two, that it will come back up. And it just has been true the past eight years. And sometimes the ebb and flow lasts longer, um, the down lasts longer, but I know that it comes back. So I'm confident about that. So if you're experiencing that too, I hope that that maybe helped you feel better. Okay, diving into the Instagram updates. The first thing that they are testing is a vertical grid on your profile. So you might be seeing this if you're in the test group. I'm not seeing this yet. However, if they decide to rule it out, on people's profiles, you will now see all of their photos as a vertical portrait sized image versus the classic square that Instagram was known for way back when. So over time, they've adapted to photo sizes and reels that take up more of the screen. So now you can post that four three aspect ratio image, which is what I post a lot on my page. So that option has been available for quite some time now but they're testing that the profile will only show photo sizes in that longer ratio to take up more screen space. And so people who are only posting squares, your profile is gonna look a little bit funky if they decide to rule this out. So I've been posting portrait sized images for a long time now. And in my marketing membership where I deliver a done for you content plan every single month for my members, I've always given them portrait size and square size so they can choose which one they want because I had a feeling that this was coming. So if you aren't yet posting that size of photo and carousel on Instagram, I recommend it. It takes up more space. It gives you more space in graphics to write more, include more imagery. And now with this potential rollout, um, we might see that this really comes to fruition and a portrait size will look much better on your profile. The next thing we saw recently announced just this past week from Adam Osteri himself, CEO of Instagram, is that new fonts and effects are rolled out for adding text onto reels. However, that has now expanded further to you can now add text onto your photos and carousels on Instagram. And to me, honestly, this is a huge improvement because so many people use a separate app to add text. Carousels have been around for a while, like the educational style carousel, the people making Canva, that's where I make mine. However, with the rise of Lemon 8 last year, we saw a lot of carousel style with fun text added on, almost looking like handwriting, things like that are quite popular. And so I think that this was really inspired by that and people posting more of those carousels that are kind of like life updates, behind the scenes updates with photos of them and a little text box next to it. And so I'm really excited that now this can be done within Instagram. As I'm filming this, I didn't have this feature yet, but I'm really excited to see it roll out. I'm hoping that I, I get it soon because it sounds like it is rolling out in the near future here. The next thing is similar with carousels. They have now expanded from the max of a carousel being 10 photos to now 20. So you can now have a 20 slide carousel, which is honestly a lot for people to swipe through all 20. However, just expanding it from 10 will help for people who were tight on 10 and wanted some more. So I'm excited to see this. Now, TikTok has had the ability to add 
more than 10 for a while now, and it goes pretty well. I've seen a lot of people be successful with a bit of a longer carousel. So I'm excited to see it come over to Instagram and kind of see what that's like. If people utilize it, if people swipe through 15 images like they do with 10 and kind of see what that engagement looks like. So I know that I'll be experimenting with this one for sure. Okay. And then we're entering our MySpace era because Instagram has launched the ability to add a song onto your profile on Instagram, which is something that MySpace, you know, had back in the day. So I think a lot of people were excited for the nostalgia of that. I personally have to pick my song still. I've been jamming to Chapel Roan all the time. So I think that's probably going to be what I pick, but I think that it's a fun way to kind of show your personality and could be a good way for brands and creatives alike to connect with their audience. If your audience comes to your profile and kind of gets a little hint of who you are and what you're all about from your song toys. The other thing that I think is cool is artists, musicians can pick a song that they wrote, like their latest single release or a latest song from their new album. And I think that that's a really fun way to promote yourself, promote your music. So if you're a musician and your music is available through Instagram's library, I think that's a really cool addition to Instagram. So I like that one a lot. Another thing that isn't necessarily new with Instagram, but that Moseri has come and said, okay, this is important, is your amount of shares that you're getting on your content. They've said, yes, shares are important to the algorithm. We want you to post entertaining content that people want to share with their friend because Instagram's a business, right? They want people on the platform, watching their ads, making them money. And so the more that content is being shared with others and bringing people onto the platform, the better it is for them. And the better it is for our users, for our followers who feel entertained, who feel inspired, or maybe they laughed at something and they wanted to send it to a friend that also increases our potential reach as well and our community. So it's a benefit for both of us. So how do you make shareable content? The main thing is emotion. We want to evoke emotion in our followers or potential followers. Think about the last time that you scrolled on social media and saw something that you maybe had the urge to send to a friend. I know sometimes funny things that relate to one of my friends or to like my husband, I'll send to them and it makes them laugh. And I love knowing that I maybe helped make them laugh, but it doesn't always have to be that entertaining, funny, humorous content. I don't post much of that myself. However, I do post inspirational content in stories. And I do think about what my audience needs to hear right now that I can relate to them and help them feel seen or heard. And that's really important in your content. So anytime that you can do that in your content, the better and the more that you'll reach people. You can also occasionally include a call to action to share this with a friend if it made you laugh or share this with a friend if you want to inspire them something like that. I wouldn't do it every single time, but you can see if that does boost anything for you or encourage people to share because that type of content really is powerful for building your community. Now, I also have a free masterclass on the three types of content to post on social media to build that community, to build trust and sales with your audience. So I will link that in the description. It's marketingbyshelby.com slash masterclass. And you can sign up for that free masterclass. It's on demand. So you can watch it at any time that you would like. And it goes over my three pillars of content that I recommend that any creative share. And one of those pillars is shareable content. And I show examples in that video as well of relating to your audience. Okay, moving kind of from Instagram to threads. Uh, this one is more about repurposing your content. So for quite a long time now, you've been able to connect your Facebook to your Instagram and repurpose content. So as you post to Instagram, it will automatically repost to Facebook if you've set it up that way. And they're now introducing that for threads as well, which makes sense since they're all kind of part of the same ecosystem. The thing with doing this though, that I found, because I've tried it a couple times, is it reposts your exact caption from Instagram to threads, which makes sense, but that includes hashtags, which I like to post on Instagram a few, but not necessarily threads. So it feels kind of out of place on threads. And the other thing is that I've just seen text posts do so much better on threads than ones with images or video. So whenever I repost to Instagram, obviously there's an image or a video with it. I don't think that reels actually is available right now to repost to threads, but images are and mine never seemed to do as well with images. So I'm not probably going to use this feature very often, but I'm also all about repurposing and saving time. So if this is something that you want to try out and try repurposing to save time, 
then give it a shot. Speaking of saving you time on social media, the Creatives Content Club is open for enrollment right now, and I would love to see you inside. The Creatives Content Club is my time-saving marketing membership for busy creatives who want to make more impact and income on social media. I do this by delivering you a done-for-you monthly content plan every single month. It comes with not only just trending audios, but all the templates that you would need, like video templates that you can use for Reels and TikToks, as well as video scripts, audios to pair with those scripts, graphic templates for square and portrait size with different ideas that will build that no like trust factor with your audience and lead to community and sales. Caption templates done for you that you just personalize and post. So it really has everything you need. And on top of that, we have our private community where you can ask me questions, ask the wider group questions. We do content audits where I review one of your social media posts each month and give you personalized feedback. And then you learn from the feedback of others as well. We have a full social media course, monthly mass classes that I bring into the club all for one low price. People say that it's like having their own marketing team and it's just one membership. So I would love to see you inside. It's marketingbyshelby.com slash club. I will link it in the description of this episode. If you want to check it out, I'd love to see you inside. Okay. Moving to TikTok. TikTok recently announced a partnership with Amazon where some ads on TikTok will actually be shoppable on Amazon from within the TikTok app. That was kind of a a riddle almost. But what I mean is that some users will be able to, if they see an ad and it's for an Amazon product, tap it, sign into Amazon from within TikTok and purchase it still all within TikTok, but they've purchased it, you know, through Amazon. So I think that this is really interesting and potential for a wider partnership in the future if this goes well. Again, this is a small test. Select users will see this. Um, and only select products will be involved with this. So as far as I know, I don't believe there's anything that we can do to get our Amazon products on TikTok at the moment. You know, you can't connect TikTok shop with Amazon at the moment, but my speculation is that this will become available in the future if this goes well, and that would be a game changer for authors. I did a video on this, a quick reel about it. So I'll let myself do the talking here and explain it to you. This Amazon update could be huge for authors selling on TikTok shop. Amazon and TikTok have announced a partnership. Select Amazon products being sold through ads on TikTok can now be purchased directly through TikTok. Users will be able to log into Amazon through TikTok to make their purchase. And while this is just a test, it's likely a setup for bigger things. My fingers are crossed that this would eventually become a partnership where people like authors who sell their books through Amazon would be able to sell through TikTok shop, but still have Amazon fulfill the order. I will definitely be keeping my eye on this. Is anyone else excited about this? So again, I'm speculating on the potential of this, but I am excited and I would love to know what you think in the comments. Staying on the topic of short form video, it really is not going anywhere. And LinkedIn has recently adapted its feed on your homepage as you're scrolling through LinkedIn to look kind of reminiscent of like Facebook whenever I'm scrolling on Facebook and it suggests reels to me that I can kind of swipe through this way, almost like a carousel of reels. LinkedIn is embracing that and showing a carousel format of reels on your feed if you are a LinkedIn user. So this again just tells me that LinkedIn is trying to push short form video, that it's working well for their users and they want more people to engage with them at this time and even post them. And this is just so key to me at this point that Of course, short form video isn't going away, but it's really just continuing to build and grow in popularity. And just pretty much every social media platform now has this. So if you have not yet embraced short form video and you want to give it a try, I highly recommend it. It can be a lot simpler than you think. It can be a five second video where you don't talk at all. So definitely give it a try. Spend some time scrolling through social media, seeing what's popular, seeing what stops your scroll. If you are someone who's brand new to TikTok and you are an author or a creative, I have a step-by-step TikTok guide for you with examples. It's a written guide and it's one of my most popular products that I have. And inside is a entire lesson on social media hooks and writing effective hooks for your content, which is that one second at the very beginning of your video. So you can check that out. That lesson's also available in the Creators Content Club if you're a member of that club. So I'd love to hear which of these updates you're most excited about trying. I think that mine is like the 20 slide carousels, but also the ability to add text with an Instagram because I think that will just save me so much time going elsewhere with my graphics and with my photos. So 
I'm excited to test that one out. I hope they have cute fonts. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please give this video a like. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, if you have a second to just leave a quick rating that is so helpful in helping this podcast find a new audience. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you next week. Bye.